How did you meet Stanislav Asayev and what kind of person is he? We studied together at university and it turned out that, well, I graduated from the law de department, but for the first two years I studied in the philosophy department at Donetsk National Technical University. As a matter of fact, we got to know each other. For two years we studied side by side, but then I went to study in the law department and he carried on in the philosophy department. We just kept in touch, we met up, talked to each other. Moreover, when he went to Kiev, actually when he was in Donetsk and I was in Kiev, Stas came over and I helped him set up contacts with the media. He had already written for the for leading publications, Ukrainska Pravda, Zerkala Nidili, Radio Free Europe, and so on. That's just how we got to know each other. But with regards to what he was like as a person, I had known Stas for over 10 years, and to a certain extent he was a very particular person. As I already said, he graduated in philosophy, and it was a kind of lifestyle for him. He was quite private, and to a certain extent he was even a loner. But nevertheless, he was one of the best students, if not the best in our group. The teachers themselves recognized that. He was a person who, in the 11th grade at school, read classical German philosophy. He read the original versions of Kant, Hegel. In the first year, he argued with the teachers, and I would say that some of the younger teachers were afraid of him. He had a command of that kind of knowledge. He was very competent. Therefore, the professors, the doctors of science, they realized he was a very good student, and they wanted him to stay on at the university. But he didn't go down the academic route. He didn't go back to university because I know after university he worked in a variety of professions, if you could call it that. He worked as a grave digger, a truck loader, anything, whatever life threw at him. In 2014 and 2015 he started to write articles and he felt that journalism was his mission. What is interesting or unique about his journalism? Following that, it should be said that he wasn't a journalist in the classical sense. He didn't work at a newspaper or television. First and foremost, he is a writer. He wanted to write well and write about important things. And if I'm not mistaken, already by the third year of the university, he had published his first collection of stories, which was completely artistic. It had nothing to do with journalism. Then, in 2013, he was even published in a string of literary publications. Already by 2015, he started to write for leading Ukrainian media. That's how it happened. You surely understand that in Donetsk, it is a difficult working environment for journalists because it's very hard to practice objective journalism. For example, if a journalist comes from the United States, from Britain, or from Kiev, in Donetsk, they will never be able to write as well as the locals. And Stas was completely local. He grew up and was born in Makiivka in Donetsk. He understood it well. He was good at writing texts. He started to write about the events that were happening there, his experiences, emotions, thoughts, and he published them on Facebook. Journalists from Kiev started to get in touch with him on Facebook and invited him to write for their publications. In this way, he started to write. In fact, his work was unique in so far as no one else got the same feel for it. When someone is directly there and has the courage to stay there, directly in Donetsk, writing about what is going on there, there is no comparison, in fact. He stayed there for a few years, and that's how he got into journalism. Of course, everyone who knew him told him, we warned him, Stas, this won't end well. It's okay if you stop this. Sooner or later, they'll find out your real name. Stas Vasin was his pseudonym, but his real name was Stanislav Asiev. He understood that, but he considered it his mission, his duty to stay in that territory and describe the events that were happening there. Could you tell us about his circumstances of his disappearance and how you find out about it? On June 3rd, his mother called me. I have known his mother for more than 10 years, but she has never called me. When she called and asked whether I knew where Stas was, I knew that something wasn't right. I knew for certain that things had come to something close to arrest because of how his mother felt. He was supposed to call his mother. They were supposed to meet the next day at 2 o'clock. He didn't turn up and his phone was switched off. Stas lived in Donetsk and his mother was in Makievka. His phone was switched off and his mother was ringing everyone she knew. And so she rang me. I obviously spoke to his mother and, and rang all the people that knew Stas. It wasn't a very long list of people, literally about seven people, people from our group, people he had kept in contact with, and no one knew where he was. We knew full well that Stas was a committed person. If he told his mother that he would meet her at two, then he would meet her at two. Or he would have called or found a way to get in contact but he didn't get in contact. We started to search through his sources. As well, he used Facebook, so I wrote him on Facebook. Stas, where are you? Your mother is looking for you. And the next day, on his account, he replied, as though nothing had happened. Hi, I was feeling a bit ill. 
So we started writing to each other. I know Stas well, it became clear and I knew it wasn't Stas. He doesn't talk like that. If someone writes to you saying your mother is in tears, she's looking for you, she's even gotten in touch with the so-called police, and he says that it's nothing, he was just feeling a bit ill, well, it, it wouldn't be like that, because they have taken over his Facebook account. Straight away we posted on Facebook that everyone, his close circle, his friends on Facebook knew that it wasn't his account, because he wasn't just talking to me, but with everyone. Moreover, while he was under arrest, there had been a few posts on his Facebook and people thought it was him. Basically, our plan worked so everyone knew about it, that Stas was being detained. That's how I found out about the fact he was in confinement. Our internal sources, because we are from Donetsk and we lived there our whole lives the last 25 years and we had a lot of genuine contacts, these unofficial sources confirmed that he was there. But literally at the end of August there was an official document from the so-called DPR and its authorities stating that Stas was definitely being detained there. This document, if I'm not mistaken, was posted on Facebook by Irina Hiroshenko saying that Stas was with them and that he was accused of espionage, again in quotes, and they could sentence him to 12 or 14 years in prison. Also, his mother met with him. I understand that the meeting took place in the Ministry of State Security building. Stas looked completely calm, physically healthy. Stas reassured his mother that everything was okay. He understood that his only hope is for an exchange, because you can't count on a fair trial there. From our sources, from the official documents, from the meeting with his mother, we can clearly state that he is there. Moreover, all the international organizations, the UN, the OSCE, and human rights organizations, confirm that Stas, as a journalist, is in the so-called security services office of the DPR. So if it's not hopeful for a fair trial in the so-called DPR, so what efforts are being made to free him? And if you hope that he will be set free, how will this come about? I think that it's not just Stas Isayev. We probably all know that we can't hope for a fair trial there. There has already been a number of examples where they've sentenced people who have never committed espionage, but they've received prison sentences in order to intimidate the population. Therefore, the only two possible options for Stas to return to Ukrainian territory are, are international pressure, pressure from the OSCE, the UN special mission, on this issue to know that Stas is being held in reasonable conditions. The other option is the Minsk process, which is a hostage exchange, when the Ukrainian side, together with the so-called DPR, can exchange hostages. There is practically no other way. It's 99% certain that the only way Stas could be released to Ukrainian territory is through the Minsk process and an exchange of hostages.